All right. In our last tutorial, we started a quick and easy edit of some family home video material that I have. And so let's continue with that now. I think before we go any further with our edit, I want to add a music track so that as we work with the material, we can be doing our cuts, doing our transitions, uh, moving from image to image to the kind of the feel or the beat of the music. This first one with Baby being so new and young, I want it to have a very uh, kind of a lullaby feel to it. So I've done a search of my licensed music to see if I can't find some kind of a nursery lullaby feel to it. So let's ch check out a couple here. Well, that's maybe not full enough. I like the music to be a little bit more full than that. Okay, I think that might work. So let's uh, bring that down to our music track and uh, might point out that you can rename these from the, uh, the 1A, 2A that comes by default. You can just right click on that and rename that. So we'll call this the music track. And uh, let's just bring that down. Well, yeah, you notice what happened here. When we did this drag and drop method, um, because we're in this sync mode and this insert mode of editing, drag and drop just really doesn't work very well. But there is a way around that um, to allow you to still do some limited drag and drop without pushing everything down the timeline that we might point out. And that is, you'll see the little symbol here that we pointed out in our first tutorial here. And that is, uh, with this on, this track is synced to all of the others. But if we click on this and remove that symbol from this little button area here, this music track will no longer be synced with the rest of the uh, video tracks or audio tracks. So now we could drag and drop that into place and nothing will get pushed down. It'll drop right into the place where we want it to start. Plus, now, as we make edits up here, let's open this up a little bit. Say we were to trim this down, you'd see that all of the video and associated audio will move, but the music track doesn't move. So as you work with an edit uh, in this method that we're displaying here, Keep in mind that you can sync or unsync any given track to move along with the edits that you make or set it so that it doesn't move at all. All right, as we look at this audio track of the music of the waveform, we can see that it is starting just a little bit early from our dissolve. Uh, let's maybe expand out this track just a little bit so that we can see this music uh, spread out a little bit. You can. Uh, make any uh, audio track wider by just taking your mouse and pointing to the division between any two tracks. And with your left mouse button pressed down, you can move that up a little bit so that you can spread out open a track. And now just by pointing to our clip, our audio file there, we can click on it to select it. This is with our left mouse button. And then with a sliding motion to the right, you can actually slide that whole clip down so that it starts more at the right place. And maybe we pushed it just a little bit too far. And if it's easier to move and manipulate clips, if you have your timeline expanded, just go ahead and do that. And then let's grab this again, move it back a little bit so that it starts right at the beginning of the dissolve. Well, we see with the kind of the beat of the music that our next clip should start right about there. I've been giving this a little thought and I'm thinking that now I'd rather start with Baby in the cradle. This shot here with Baby rocking back and forth. So how do we do that? How do we take this clip and move it to the first spot in place? Well, once again, you can point to it and notice that as we uh, slide now our mouse to the left and drop it right down where the uh, first clip starts and let our mouse go that we have actually reversed these two shots. Now we're starting with baby in the cradle. And so it's very easy to rearrange the position of your clips 
just by dragging and dropping them into place. We didn't lose the clip that was there. We didn't overwrite it. We just basically pushed it down the line. It wasn't actually even like we were reversing the clips or just trading places with the clips. Let's take another example here where we maybe move this clip and move it right next to the, uh, the baby in the cradle. Notice that we haven't changed places. The kissing shot is just pushed down the line. So as I look at this and listen to the change of the music, I think what I would like to do is change to a close-up of baby rocking in the cradle. Say this shot right here. However, rather than just take this clip and move it to that point where the music changes, and you can tell that the music is changing just by looking at the waveform, you know where that new beat of music is going to happen. Uh, rather than just drag and drop that clip right to that point, uh, we're going to do it in a little different way because I'll show you what happens when we do that. Let's drop it there. You'll notice that this clip that was there, when we're in this insert mode, uh, the, the, the new clip that we're dropping in place doesn't overwrite the old clip uh, the way we have our settings uh, set. And so it's really split this clip into two. If we were to point to it, we'll see that both sides of the clip are still there. And now we can't delete this part without deleting the others. If we were to hit the delete key right now, the whole clip is gone. And we're now just starting with the close-up shot of baby rocking in the cradle. So let's undo that, control Z. And uh, let's maybe do control Z again so that we're back to where we were. And this time, let's go back and find that point where the music changes point to our clip with our mouse and click on it and then hit the C key and now we can delete that portion of the clip and now when we bring our close-up shot of baby over it will push the next shot down so we still haven't lost that but uh, we're not having to worry about uh, breaking up this first clip. So we see some music changing right about there. That'll probably be a good place to break up our next edit. So we could delete that, get a nice shot of baby. And uh, if we want to see a little bit more of uh, a Big Sister rocking the cradle there, we should probably trim this back. So let's, remembering how to do that, just grab the end and start trimming that back so that we can get more of that shot timing up with the music. Well, we see that the next shot should start just a little bit sooner, right about there. And uh, here's something that you should know, that in this trim mode, if you uh, click right in between the two, where you see the yellow and the green showing up. Now, when you trim back on the first clip, you're going to actually reveal more material from the next shot. At least you will if there's material to reveal. Like I believe if we tried that method over here, where you have the, uh, the last frame of this shot and the first frame of that shot showing, when we actually try and do a trim there, it's not going to work. There's nothing to slide back and forth there. But if you, <clears throat> I think from our previous session, we did already trim this clip back, and so there's material there to reveal. Well, we probably want to start that shot sooner, so we're going to trim that back a little bit. And uh, we see the shot is just a little shaky there, so we might uh, start looking for another shot. Here's Grandma and Baby. Let's maybe just drop that into place and see how that works. Oh, 
Okay, well, it looks like we timed up the music well, but again, we're not working with the best shot, perhaps. I think we could go to this close-up of Grandma and Baby. Let's just drag that into place. And right about there, we need to change the shot again to go with the music. Let's see what else we got here. Well, here's a nice shot of uh, of Joshua getting his first kiss from from his big sister. So that's kind of cute. Let's try dropping that. Uh, first of all, let's go find our spot again. There's where we need to do it, right about there. So we're going to do our cut there and find that shot of the first kiss and uh, just slip that over in place there and we'll probably need to trim that back so grab a hold of that yeah right about there maybe just try that well maybe there was just a little bit too much at the beginning there let's trim that back a little bit more Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I'll trim it back just a little bit more so we can see a little bit more of Grandma's expression there before we need to change to the feel of the music again. There, right about there. So let's make our cut there. And you get the idea of how easy this can be. We can delete these shots that uh, we know we don't want or need anymore and just move on down the timeline. We've probably already kind of seen uh, a similar shot to that so we can delete that just go down and and delete those that uh, you know aren't going to work for your segment very quickly just have one finger on the delete key as you as you scroll through your shots now as we scroll through here we see that we have another angle of this shot of sister getting to know her brother and we're wondering if maybe that might work better as kind of an establishing shot, establishing angle. Let's maybe do a cut here. Delete that. And everybody's wearing the same clothes, so it should work. Okay, so let's get a little section here. Okay, so we see a big thing happening here with the music. We uh, should probably look for a shot that uh, is a big uh, change of... Well, this is kind of cute here. Baby's a couple days old now, already starting to show some jaundice. <laughs> All orange. So let's try dropping that. Let's find our big change of music again. Right about there. Let's um, bring it into place and then maybe fine tune it a little bit. If at any point you wanted to switch, if it was helpful, to switch between the insert mode and the overwrite mode, uh, you might want to think about doing that. You could either go up uh, to the uh, little button here and hit it once so that it shows the amber down arrow and now we would be in the uh, overwrite mode or you could also use the keyboard shortcut the insert key on your keyboard will toggle back and forth between the two modes and so if at any point that uh, you are editing in this style that we're demonstrating and it would be a lot easier if you could just slip into the overwrite mode for a brief moment you can hit the insert key be in the overwrite mode and then just slide your clip in place and that will overwrite the previous clip rather than, um, well, we'll show you what, let's undo that. And if we didn't have that uh, overwrite mode in place, notice what happens if we move that down. It will do it all right, but it also divides that clip up like we were showing you earlier. And now the rest of that clip is way back here at the end. And what can happen is you can be 
editing along and you'll say, what on earth is this little piece of video here? And, and uh, you may not even notice that it is connected with this other clip. And so you could be, you know, if you're expanded out here and you're looking at this and you're saying, well, what on earth is this piece of video here? We're not going to use that. And you hit your delete key and you keep editing, you know, down the line. But then later you come to find out you've lost that clip, that, that nice kissing shot of the, you know, it's, it's gone. So let's undo that. And uh, just remember that if you if you're using this method of sliding a clip over, you're going to break up the clip and end up with this possible problem of deleting material that you never intended to delete. So it, let's hit undo again. So remember that it can be helpful every once in a while to just hit your insert key on your keyboard, be in the overwrite mode temporarily, slide your clip into place, you will leave yourself a gap there, but that's easy enough to fix. Well, it looks like we need to slide it over just a little bit more. Boom, we need something else right there. Let's um, do our cut there, delete. Uh, now, because we are in the uh, other mode, this overwrite mode, uh, we, we've left a gap instead. A couple things you could do there. If you right-click in the space, this little gray area, the, the gap in between the two, if you right-click in that, you'll notice that one of your options there is delete gap, and that will take care of that problem. But let's go back to our insert mode of editing. And I think what we need to do is look for a shot of mama and baby. Well, here's a shot of mama and baby in the hospital. So maybe something right in there would be good. Uh, maybe not. Um, maybe we can stretch that back a little bit. Notice that you can move all of your clips in the opposite direction. I don't know if we pointed that out as well this trimming motion where you're moving all of the clips on the timeline that are to the left or to the right, uh, you can do that in either direction too. Let's try there. Well, that might be okay. Remember, it's just a home video. Let's undo that. We, we ended up cutting our music track instead. Sometimes it can be helpful to have your focus permanently designated to a particular track. Somehow our focus got down to the music track. And so let's undo that. And uh, just point to this area here so that our focus is now on the first video track. And now when we hit our C key, even before we've pointed to the clip, because we have our focus there, uh, Edius knows that that's where we want our C key action to happen. So now we can delete and uh, baby's in the taxi headed home. Let's see if we've got a better section here. That's kind of a little better shot. I think I might just drag that and replace the other one. Mama had a C-section, you can probably tell there. Well, I think that that uh, probably does it for this episode of uh, editing uh, your home videos in a quick and easy way with Edia 7. In our next session, we're going to take a look at how to work with some of the effects that Edius has, how to make uh, a clip into slow motion, how to add a soft focus, how to add some transitions, some other filters or effects and also work with the layout tool. If uh, you happen to have some footage that is maybe from a GoPro camera that is a little bit different size than the rest of our video, we'll show you how we, you can trim that into place. Okay, but for now, I believe that that does it for this installment of quick and easy edits of family home videos.